let's go to the gates. Um, and our patron, saint, as it were, of the evening, Sam Johnston, uh, Harvard class of 1855. Now, I don't know how much you know about him, but I was able to glean uh, this much from uh, the wonderful 150th anniversary of the Harvard Club of Chicago that was uh, given to me by Walter. Thank you so much, it's a great reference. You can see that uh, Johnston was um, a financier and real estate entrepreneur. He also, I don't know if you know this, he also was the patron who donated the Shakespeare statue in Lincoln Park, and his name is on that. Um, there is a story that when the Chicago fire roared by Johnston's house in the Gold Coast, he actually stood on his porch, lifted his glass, and raised a toast to it. <laughs> now, you know, this, that is rather bizarre behavior, but I mean, the guy was a land developer. So clearly, <laughs> I mean, the, the O'Leary's probably should be looking into Sam Johnston and whether he was the one who actually started the fire. Okay. Uh, so yesterday, as uh, you can do at the newspaper, uh, I went and looked for the um, Sam Johnston in our files, and sure enough, in 1886, uh, shortly after he died, uh, his will was read, and it was big news, because he was a really rich guy. Uh, and he was worth uh, roughly half a million dollars in 1886, which was big, big money. So if you look, and I know it's gonna be hard to do if you're in the back of the room, but if you look in this will, um, yeah, I'm gonna just drag the mic with you. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, whoops. Well, anyway, if you look in, it's okay. If you look in item 15, you see, uh, as I'm trying to with my lousy eyesight, that Sam left $10,000 for the erection of the main gate in front of the college yard at Harvard University. Quite an impressive request. And this is the Shakespeare statue, uh, just for your reference. And if you look down at the bottom, you can see that it says uh, the bequest of Samuel Johnston. Here's the gate uh, from the inside, inside the yard looking out toward the church uh, across the way. It's the wrought iron in this gate is extraordinary, as you see here. Uh, you can see the date, 1889, in the small shield or escutcheon below the cross. The cross, of course, stands for Harvard's commitment to train uh, ministers, uh, a, a big agenda item of the Puritans who founded the place. Uh, and of course, 1636, the year of Harvard's founding. Um, the gate occupies a central place in Harvard's architectural identity. Uh, this, of course, is Memorial Hall, the great uh, monument to the Civil War uh, cause uh, and the cause of abolition, uh, a high Victorian Gothic building, polychromatic, over the top, gargoyles, you name it. Um, Charles McKim, who designed uh, the Johnston Gate, really changed Harvard's architectural emphasis, bringing it back to the Georgian Revival style of Massachusetts Hall and Harvard Hall, and really created a series of a, a kind of Georgian Revival scrim, like you see here uh, with the Morgan Gate along Massachusetts Avenue and the two Wigglesworth Halls that really kind of masked the eclectic jumble that Harvard architecture had become uh, before the um, Johnson Gate was built. I didn't know any of this a year ago today, when we, Willie and I, our older son, were driving to Harvard. And so when I got there, I was intrigued by these gates and their ornament and these numbers. What did these numbers, 77, what did that mean? And what were these strange creatures, like these rams, this ram's head in stone, uh, a ram's head that was chewing on uh, leaves? Uh, why was that there? And then there was another Chicago connection in the famous Dexter Gate. Um, Samuel Dexter, the class of 1890, was born in Chicago in 1867, and he died only four years after his graduation. So what happened to Samuel Dexter? And then there were other things that were honestly very disturbing. Um, this is a close-up of a fountain with a lion's head looking over it. 
in the classes of 1887 and 88 double gate, the only circular gate, the only double gate sponsored by two classes in the yard. As you can see, it was being used, it's still being used as a, essentially garbage dump. Um, being a good reporter, I picked up the bottle of vodka in there and noticed that it sold for $9.99. Actually, which is the same price as the ebook. God, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> never thought of that until now. Anyway. But this one's kind of disgusting. This is a McKim Mead and White gate, and Harvard's treating it like dirt, uh, literally. Okay, whoops, a little mistake there, sorry about that. Um, okay, well all this, sorry, led to a class called, there it is, called Rate the Gates, which was a winter session or January term class. And we had nine students, two other Neiman Fellows and I taught it, and we gave the students eight days to research and do visual analysis of uh, two gates, two gates apiece. So here we are with, here I am with two of the students. We school them in Chicago journalism. So there's an expression in the newsroom called hat and coat, which means you have to go out, you know, and cover a news story no matter how cold it is. So this day it was like 20 degrees, it was freezing, and we made the students stand outside the gates for like half an hour straight and count the number of people who were passing through because we wanted to see how many people used the gates. And even in January, interestingly enough, in, a, in only half an hour, 1,300 people course through the different gates. Um, we also taught them things like uh, the famous saying from the Chicago City News Bureau about fact checking. And this is a, a line I'm sure you've heard, when your mother says she loves you, check it out. Um, <laughs> so that's Chicago, right? Okay, so um, the Harvard Gazette uh, wound up, uh, we, we published the students' essays in a kind of quick and dirty, uh, website, the Harvard Gazette, wrote a very nice story about uh, our efforts. And ultimately, I decided that the students' work was so good that it should be turned into an ebook. And so um, we did it. And whoops, I just blew my, uh, and so now I want to show you the ebook. Okay, um, this is a page from the ebook. And this, is in the introduction, and this shows you what Harvard Yard looked like before the Johnston Gate was built, okay? It is a very simple post and rail fence, uh, appropriate for a small, somewhat parochial college, which is exactly what Harvard was, and I don't say that uh, disparagingly because I'm from Yale. I mean, even Harvard people will tell you that that's what Harvard was until President Eliot took over, and here he is and really pumped up the university and made it the great world-renowned research university it is today. Gates are pervasive at Harvard. You can see that, that here, the, you walk through them as you go to the football games. There even are modernist gates, uh, as at um, Leverett, uh, the high rises along uh, the Charles River. So let me get to our favorite gate. Oh, actually, let me give you this map first. So, there are 25 gates that encircle the yard. Here's a map of them, okay? Um, seven of the gates are permanently locked, largely for security reasons. Some of them have been locked for decades. Um, and the main gate that we're gonna look at is Johnston, and that's right here. Um, so you can see how in this gate, in this shot, how Charles McKim of McKim Eden White, the architect, really was trying to harmonize with the Georgian, the Georgian architecture of Massachusetts Hall, which is on your right, the building with the clock, and Harvard Hall, the building with the cupola that you see uh, on the left. Now, this is where it gets fun. Here's Johnston Gate, and this is the kind of thing that you can do with an iPad book. You can have interactive iPhone panoramas. They take you, here's Johnston Gate, and you can go up, you can go down, and you can ride the merry-go-round all the way around Harvard Square and see exactly what this looks like. Now this is fun, but it is also an amazing tool for historians. I mean, think in 50 years, they will be able to see exactly what was happening in Harvard Square, it was something they could not do with a still picture of the gate. Um, 
Other things we can do with this interactive format, let's say you are reading the book and you don't really know what Gothic Revival means. So you press a button and a definition pops up. Kind of neat. Um, then you can enlarge pictures and you can see how the Puritans really never really mastered spelling very well. <laughs> um, but that's why they needed, they needed smart people from Harvard to train, train ministers. Um, now, this is a detail on the back of Johnston Gate that is fascinating. Samuel Johnston donated $10,000 for this gate. And as often happens with architects, they ran short on the budget. They did not have enough money for the wrought iron, the extraordinary web of wrought iron that McKinley and White had designed. So to the rescue came Marion Alice Appleton, whose initials you see in reverse, right here on the back of the gate. Can you, can you see those? See where it says AAM? Well, that is actually MAA, and it's pretty clear to me that McKinley and White did that to match the reversal, the reverse image of 1636 on the backdrop. So a so I guess you could call it the Johnston Appleton Gate, but for Chicago purposes, it is the Johnston Gate. 